So one of the most recent questions I've had posed to myself is, what is the PSA set registry? What does it do? Does it even serve a function? Should I even bother with it for Pokemon cards? Well, in today's video, we'll take a look at that and hopefully I can sell you on whether or not you should even spend the time, you know, creating a set registry for your collection. But before that gets done, roll that intro. <laughs> Hey Gengar gang, what is going on? My name is Ryan, this is the Analytic Gengar, and welcome to another video. In today's video, friends, we talk about the PSA set registry, and more importantly, we talk about how it can be applicable to our hobby and why it might be a critical and key component for Pokemon as we go into the future. Now, as many of my videos are, this one is loosely based off of the article on screen right now. You'll be able to find the link down below, and if you don't find it down below, know that I probably forgot to add the link when I was uploading this to YouTube, and you should probably just get in touch and remind me, or let me know down below in the comments, and I'll do my best to add the link and get it to anyone who's interested in checking out the article. But with all that said, shout out to Cardlines for another great article, and without further ado, let's get into it. So the PSA set registry, uh, specifically speaking, what is the set registry effect? So there is a really interesting uh, thing that you can do with PSA, which is basically when you create an account, you also have the ability to set up your registry. Every registry is basically exactly what it sounds like. It's a place where you can register your collection and then you can basically add a running list of all of the, all of the different cards that you have in your collection. What's really cool is that as you can see on screen from the screenshot that was captured, there's tons of people participating in this stuff. And in a weird way, it kind of works like gamification for collecting. So as an example, you have some folks in the baseball set, the basketball set, and technically I guess we fall into the non-sports area down here, which ironically enough has been cut off by the title but I think the most important thing to note is that they do have non sports cards and that's technically where we would sit non surprisingly there are some big collectors out there in the Pokemon TCG space that have set registries perhaps the most prevalent of which would be rusty so um, for anyone who doesn't know TCA gaming or the the Charizard Authority or Rusty, if you know or have done or spoken to him in the past, um, has one of these registries and you can go check out his collection. It's pretty neat. So um, many collectors, as the article notes, are unfortunately vaguely aware of it or unaware of it, depending on you know how intently you stare at the PSA website, depending on what your purposes on the website are. Um, but ironically enough, it's a really interesting space where PSA has basically allowed collectors to say, hey, here's what I have, here's what I need, and then let people compete against each other. And so it's a really interesting space. Now, to briefly go over what the set registry is, um, it's basically a place where, as previously stated, you uh, can basically just sit and set up your personal collection and say, here's a roster of everything that I have. So you can register your set for free and PSA will probably make a lot of money um, and make collecting expensive for a lot of us because of the fact that there are these factors at play that help drive prices up. So PSA is not silly with the way that they went about this. So one of the things that happens is you go in, you create your account, you go ahead and get all of your cards listed into the set registry. Then what happens is PSA will evaluate your set. So as you can see by this image of the UI, um, they'll give you a, you know, ideal number and then they'll say like, hey, here's the, you know, total number of cards that you can collect from this set and then they will practically rank you on that as well so they'll basically say compared to the ultimate standard as well as all of your peers competing within this particular registry here's how well you're doing and then what's really cool is that PSA also does annual awards so they'll do things um, like collection of the year set of the year rookie of the year um, vintage modern baseball modern football etc etc I'm sure there are ones for the TCG as well which again is really cool and really neat because it basically encourages a little bit of friendly competition amongst collectors now again do I think that the non sports people are gonna compete with the sports people I doubt that um, I you know I, I, I don't think there's enough overlap there that that there's really a, a chance to compete but like within the modern baseball set 
I'm sure there's tons of people that go at it. And similarly, we as a community could in theory get into this. So um, the registry then goes on to also have an achievement program. So basically much like any sort of gamified approach to things, PSA wants people to not only set up the registry, but also remain involved. So that's where the gamification comes into play. Basically what they do is they give you quote unquote recognition or points or whatever have you based on completion, competition, collection, and community. So whether or not you are adding inventory and getting closer to completing an entire set, whether or not you're gaining advantages or overtaking other collectors, whether you're using the registry or not, like I said, they want to make sure you come back to this stuff. And then, you know, how you're interacting with the remainder of the community, I assume through comments or recognition or stuff like that done through their website. Again, the intention behind this is not only to get people talking, but to get people looking at what others who have registered their sets are looking at. Now, you may say at this point, well, Ryan, this is a great waste of six minutes, but I would argue there is some really cool stuff that I think can happen here. Now, if there's one thing I can say about PSA that's a good thing is that they do tend to listen to people as long as they're vocal enough. And I think that for, you know, PSA specifically, the registry for non-sports cards could be benefited by Pokemon. Obviously, there's tons of people out there. Obviously, Rusty is already on there as well as tons of other folks, I'm sure. But I think with some slight process updates and some slight fine adjustments, I think the registry could also really fit the needs of our particular community as well. The reason being, um, just as an example, people don't typically collect all of EX Dragon Frontiers. Unfortunately, there's just not enough cards in there that it's important enough a set to collect. Maybe base set, maybe hidden fates because of how universally loved it is, but there are very few and far in between sets where you know people need to collect every single card a good example is hidden fates mainly because it came out at a time when grading was still relatively affordable you could submit value submissions for eight dollars a piece and cards came out with enough severity and frequency that it was very likely that you could get a full master set of the shiny pokemon just purely based on you submitting you know five of each card and getting tens so it's not insane to think that some people might be collecting full sets but i think what's more important for our hobby is the different types of cards so just as an example they could make a registry for first edition hollows base set and so you would really be collecting the x amount of holographics in first edition from the base set another good example would be the shining pokemon from the neo era or the crystal type Pokemon from the generation two sort of E-series era. You could have the EX cards, more importantly, you could have the gold star cards, and then you can have level X, you can have prime, you can have the shiny secret rares from the black and white era, etc., etc. But I think you get the idea. In theory, Pokemon could benefit greatly, not from the use of the registry as a set checklist, but rather as a type of card checklist. So, uh, moving on uh, and kind of leaving my own thoughts behind, um, the idea behind all of this and the achievement program is to create an addictive and immersive experience that encourages hardcore collectors to rely on PSA graded cards, and it works. So here's where the article gets a little interesting because they basically say like, hey, the set registry is actively influencing card value. And by the way, this isn't in like a sus or bad way, it's just a happenstantial side effect of what's happening. Basically, I put all my cards up there and then PSA and their registry points out what I'm missing. Now, all of a sudden, because I'm hooked on this experience of completing the set because it's in front of me right now, I'm now willing to buy PSA cards and I'm more willing to buy them at a higher price, mainly because of the registry. So that's the argument the article is making right here. And I do think, to some extent, there is a little bit of truth to this because chances are if PSA has enough of your loyalty that you're willing to set up a registry, chances are you're also gonna be willing to buy their cards. And now that they're telling you what cards are missing and giving you frequent updates and gamifying the entire experience for you, you're probably going to be willing to go out of your way to spend more money. So some of the ways that the article claims this happens, it creates a premium for low population cards. Obviously, if you are collecting all of the gold stars in PSA 10, we know for a fact that it's an incredibly limited number of cards that exist out there. I believe the lowest population card last I checked was the gold star Torchic. 
And so there's only less than like 20 of those in the world. The problem is that in addition to everything else, not only are they incredibly hard to find, but now you're going to have an incomplete set of Gold Star PSA 10s until you buy that card. And if five other people are doing the same, guess what happens the next time one goes up on eBay? It creates a huge incentive for someone to pay a huge premium because not only will you be attaining your goal, but you also then get it get to add it to the set registry. Now, do I think that type of behavioral or psychological effect plays out to the extent of tens of thousands of dollars? No, but I do think it does have a slight effect on the way people are willing to bid, and that might be the ultimate reason. More importantly, PSA is just guaranteeing brand loyalty here, which I think is hilarious, but I also think is very psychologically powerful because again, why should I buy BGS? Even if I do buy BGS, what am I gonna do? The first thing I'm gonna do is try to grade it or cross grade it at PSA so I can add it to my set registry. Now, one interesting tidbit that um, I didn't realize, but uh, is apparently observed in this article at least, is that there's no coincidence that the popularity of the set registry coincided with a massive rise in value for, gra for graded cards. Um, so what's interesting is that, at least in the sports world, this is now happening because of the set registry, and it's an observed correlation. One may have very well caused the other, and at a minimum, I think we can say it definitely had an influence. And what's really, really cool is that um, this is playing out for the sports card world right now. Now, why is this not playing out for the Pokemon card world? Well, I think there's a few reasons. If you look at this card uh, for this, this PSA 8 from way back in the day, it's actually a card from 1948. So, uh, needless to say, it's over 70 years old at this point, and needless to say, Pokemon doesn't have a card that's older than maybe 27 years old. And that's accounting for things like any type of uh, promo card or some sort of like demonstration or four position only card, including the proto stories, by the way. Now, all things considered, one of the reasons why I thought this was an important topic to bring up is not only because one of the most significant collectors in our hobby, again, TCA Gaming, is already on the set registry, but because I think many other collectors will slowly but surely begin the process of getting onto the set registry, especially as things age out. Now, again, in uh, give or take 50 years, I'm probably going to be in my 70s, if not my 80s, and what that likely means is that I'm probably not gonna care about my trading cards anymore. Um, I will probably have either sold them off or passed them along to someone who does by that point. However, uh, there will be other collectors out there, folks that aren't even born yet, who are going to be actively collecting and spending stupid amounts of money on Pokemon cards, assuming our hobby remains healthy and continues to grow. So, all things considered, at that point, the hobby will do something called maturing. And that's just because a lot of people tend to forget this hobby is not that old. At a maximum, it's like 25, 26, 27 years old. So you could only have collected Pokemon cards for that amount of time. In 50 years, that's going to be a completely different story. And I think at that point, some of these more vintage sets, especially like generation three and backwards, are going to be extensively documented in the set registry. And that may be an opportunity for people to really kind of show off their collections and see this type of stuff play out over time. Now, uh, the article goes on to say, hey, I just got to have that expensive card. Well, yeah, no, duh. And I even got to have that cheap card graded as a PSA. Yeah, because the opposite is true as well, right? If you're collecting PSA 5 or even, you know, just a random generic like set like EX Deoxys, um, you know, you might have the Gold Star Rayquaza, you might have the various EX cards and the Latios and the Latias, but guess what? Now even that stupid Delta Species Feebas that's a fire type, you're going to need one of those as a PSA or, you know, graded with PSA or even graded with PSA as a 10. So even though it's a cheap card and it's technically not worth anything close to the Gold Star Rayquaza, Ironically enough, PSA still gets you because you still have to use their service in order to get the card graded. Um, there is a competitor registry. It is the Beckett registry, which was launched in 2011. Uh, it's no comparison in size, though. And this is one of Beckett's most noted 
uh, deficiencies is their website and their information system is simply not there to compete with PSA. And PSA has made a lot of enhancements, by the way, over the past year and a half that have really just made them the market leader in the space. If you're looking for a clean, easy to use user interface, PSA is your grading company of choice, period, end of story, sorry. Now, just as a bit of comparison, Beckett has 105,000 cards registered on there. Uh, PSA has over 200,000 sets that each have multiple cards. So at a minimum, assuming each set has at least five cards, on average, you're looking at over a million cards registered. Beckett entered the late you know, the race too late and yeah, they're probably not going to catch up. Uh, so yeah, unfortunately Beckett's in a situation where they're probably going to have to do a lot of work to get, get, uh, get up to speed. And unfortunately it's not only impacting their registry, it's just their entire website. The bottom line on the set registry effect. Yes, it does have a pretty significant impact on the hobby. Um, specifically for sports cards, it's one of those things where it's been around long enough as a hobby. Uh, that people have made extensive use of PSA. Um, honestly, after making this video and going through all the steps to learn what the PSA set registry is, I'm also planning on making my own set registry. And I think this is just one of those things that I'm gonna commit to because I think it's really cool to do so. I don't necessarily know that I'm gonna be you know, co completing entire sets, but I do want to make it known like, hey, here are the cards that I have in the universe and um, hopefully, you know, uh, more and more people can do the same because I think it's going to be really cool to cross compare and also I think one of the things that's overlooked in this article is the ability for each of us as collectors to help each other because although there's this argument that you know it's you versus me in the registry I do think it also opens up an opportunity if I list all my superfluous cards up for trade that maybe there's some facilitated you know type of trading that can go on one way or another that can help both of us mutually truly complete our goals. So just a thought, something to consider, but I think overall the registry makes it more addictive and more fun to, you know, collect cards and maintain that sort of registry presence. And then I think that moreover, as our hobby continues to grow and mature, don't be surprised if you see more and more people on their set registry because it is becoming a powerful information tool and can greatly help expand the prospects of the Pokemon TCG once the hobby matures a little bit more and more and more people are willing to jump on the registry and just sort of dive in and enjoy everything that it has to offer. But with all that said, friends, thanks again for checking out another video. If you learned anything new about PSA, the set registry, or why and how it might have an impact on prices for PSA graded cards, definitely feel free to leave a like on the video. And as always, if you're not already, feel free to subscribe to the Gengar Gang to join our happy little community. As always, thank you for your viewership. I'll be down in the comments if there are any questions or if you want to chat more about the set registry. And other than that, thank you again for your viewership, and we will talk soon. Peace.